All right, so typically when your engine is cold, you won't get any of that kickback. Um, so yeah, if your engine is cold, it'll typically start right up, no problems. But uh, as soon as your engine warms up, you almost you, your ignition isn't firing at 100% now, and you're getting that kickback. So um, you, if you have if, if you experience any of that, you're gonna want to cease and desist um, trying to use your starter motor because a you'll fry the starter. Um, you don't want to do that uh, because that'll end up costing you a lot more. Uh, B, you could end up potentially flooding the engine by doing this because every time, especially if it's fuel injected, which it typically is when you're dealing with something this advanced, it'd be fuel injected, a TBI unit. Your injectors are forcing more fuel into the engine and, and you're going to flood it. So, I mean, you don't want to go there. Uh, if it starts doing this, you're going to want to stop and don't try it anymore. Just park it. All right, so first thing we're going to want to do if you're dealing with the a Caprice Classic, you may notice that it's kind of a tight squeeze in here to get to the distributor. You know, it'll make your job a little easier as if you remove the air breather. Uh, it'll make some room for you. Definitely as much space as you possibly can. Um, definitely be beneficial in your favor. Uh, oh yeah. Okay, so we'll remove the air breather assembly from the vehicle hang it out of our way anyway get it out of there and uh, we'll gain better access to your distributor cap uh, you're going to um, <clears throat> want to get your cap out of here you see way in yonder see those two connectors there that's your ignition control module there are two fasteners that hold the ICM in place and uh, we'll go ahead and remove that there's two connectors here and there's also a two prong connector underneath the distributor cap. So there's actually three connectors total on this unit. A uh, very straightforward fix, 20 minute job. You are gonna be fighting with the firewall, so if your neighbor's kids are outside, have a cup of coffee and just relax. We don't need your neighbor coming over here again, right? He was already mad enough from the fiasco about you driving off and your tailgate was down and all your empties flew out all over the road and they blew into his yard because there was a tornado coming that day. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is remove your distributor cap. And for that, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver or a stubby Phillips screwdriver. Now, these distributor caps aren't like traditional uh, distributor caps where you have a, a locking mechanism where you push down, where it's spring-loaded, and you push down and turn it half a turn and then undo your screwdriver. And then, you know, that screw is now unlatched where you can actually remove your distributor cap. It's not quite like that anymore. These screws actually are fasteners that are bolted down so now this one is behind the coil so you're not going to be able to see it for clarity but there is one right behind the coil here and there is one on the opposite side as well there's only the uh the two of them so we'll go ahead and start removing them all right excuse me now from uh, under the hood uh, we're going to remove our distributor cap um there's actually a lot of rotations you got to make with this unit uh, because like I say they do thread in there see there's the screws there and um, I'm gonna try and get this out of here without disconnecting many of them might have to disconnect this unit here I don't want to disconnect too many of them uh, all right so I went ahead and removed all the wires to remove my distributor cap now you're you might not want to do that unless you absolutely are for certain that you know uh, the orientation on how they go back on the cap. Uh, I've seen a lot of people not know how or where the wires go and they can, you know, the engine will start to backfire and run rough or may not run at all. So you want to make sure you know uh, how that goes. So you want to remove your cap and then you'll find that the unit is right in behind there. There it is in all its glory. You have a lot of rust and corrosion in there. This ICM is kerplunk. It's got to come out of there. It's no good. It's done. So we're going to go ahead and replace that in real time for you guys and uh, get this engine running again. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to have a very stubborn stuck distributor rotor. Now, <clears throat> I already gave it a few love taps there. Uh, yours is more than likely going to be seized on there, more, more or less. Um, especially if there's a lot of corrosion in behind the cap. Uh, when you are going out to buy yourself a new ICM, you might as well buy a new cap and rotor. Uh, I just noticed something here, and I think I did it. 
Uh, I just put a split in the bottom of my rotor here and um, I'm pretty sure I did it. Um, but like I say, this thing is really seized on there. Um, if you take note, you probably can get a small pry bar under there too, but I don't really care for doing that because you can run the risk of, well, yeah, um, breaking plastic inside there. So we got quite a problem here. Uh, we got a defective rotor, plus we got a piece of it inside. Not good, not good, not good, not good, not good. Uh, so this can actually cause a lot of performance issues too all on its own accord. Uh, it makes me wish that they wouldn't have discontinued the uh, the old style distributor rotors with the uh, two little six bolt or uh, six mil bolts. Uh, those were a lot more easier than these. Uh, it's just one of those things. This was around the era when they tried to start phasing out the distributor. Uh, 90, uh, 1994 they had a different kind of setup. It was still a distributor, but it was a capless kind of distributor If any of that makes sense to any of you guys uh, Some of you are guys out there who have 350s from 94 and up would know what I'm talking about This rotor here is definitely shot, but uh, I got a piece broken in here and I got a Piece broken here, and there is a large split So uh, yeah, it's definitely a war it's uh, had its day. Better uh, viewing here. Nice close up. See here, we got a busted piece of plastic that is part of the remnants of our old distributor rotor. And there is a hairline split right here in the center. And I could actually see it moving when I was wiggling the, the rotor. Very unfortunate. But this, if you guys are replacing your ICM, I do recommend you guys getting a new distributor. Uh, rotor and cap. I usually get them in a, as a box set um, Sometimes you can save a little bit of money as it, if you buy the cap and rotor separate um, but the better higher-end um, Copper coated uh, distributor rotors like This guy here actually some of them are even brass uh, There's obviously top dollar titanium nut job units um, usually for around 30 or 5 or 40 dollars and it comes with a new rotor and cap So I mean you're kind of better off to and get it as a, in a kit rather than cheaping out and buying just uh, But anyway, uh, so if you guys have a scenario a scenario like this you're better off to uh, replace this unit and Because uh, that's no good to you and uh, and also you're gonna have to try and get that out of there You can't have that in there Oh goody uh, the next few minutes are going to be pretty horrible for me but as you can see here we can now gain access to our um, to our ICM it's just on the opposite side it's kind of tough to see for clarity purposes but you can see these two pigtails here you can go ahead and unplug these uh, they are uh, a different style so I mean you cannot reverse them they are not interchangeable all right so I mean they're different styles so you don't have to worry about labeling these guys. This guy's got a four pin. This guy's only has a two. And there's also a two pin connector underneath there. Hard to see because of clarity purposes. But it is green and white. And uh, it is plugged into the back side of the ICM. So it's going to be a tight squeeze, especially if you're dealing with a Caprice. Because for some reason they decide to go ergonomic with these cars. And well, now you're fighting against the firewall. Good luck to you. I'm going to need a beer for this. Okay, so very straightforward. A uh, 730 seconds. A socket is going to be required in order to remove the two fasteners that hold this unit in. And kind of take note. That one is here. A little dark out here. And then one's just on the opposite side. And go ahead and remove the screw. Now if you guys are planning on putting the old unit back in um, you're going to want to make sure you don't rub off the silicone grease that is applied to the unit there's silicone grease on the bottom of these and it's for heat dissipation so you're going to want to make sure that you don't um, take any off and if we take note here there isn't even any on here it's gone um, and judging by all the rust and corrosion on here this unit is, has been done for a while and this here is probably the sole reason why this car ended up in the junkyard to begin with 
is because whoever was driving this car would drive it when it was cold and as soon as the engine would warm up about midway down the freeway or something or halfway off an on-ramp um, somebody started noticing there was a lot of problems with the the engine and it probably wouldn't keep up to traffic and that's probably what happened is the owner got fed up and no longer wanted to invest the money into it so I I'm pretty well assuming that this is what is has caused um, the engine to have uh, caused so much problems and headaches um, now I, I don't know for sure I haven't dealt with the previous owners of this vehicle I picked this thing up at a junkyard and I hauled it right out of there on a car dolly it did run and it idled all for about two hours all of a sudden about two weeks after I owned the car that's when it started dying on me so I mean something like that of that nature anyway <clears throat> I would say so anyway, there's a pigtail here, a lot of corrosion in this distributor, which is starting to make me think this distributor is no good to me. I probably would have been better off ahead to order a brand new distributor for this automobile. We do have a lot of, of rusty um, sediment and whatnot. So I'm going to try and clean this up here as best as I can. I'm going to see if I can get that broken piece of uh, my old rotor out of there. It's going to be a very troublesome task. If I take the old ICM out of there, I might be able to apply heat to it and kind of see if I can manipulate it out of there. There really isn't anything to hurt over there. So, I mean, maybe if just a little bit of warmth, um, especially with it being so cold, maybe a little bit of heat wouldn't help or wouldn't hurt it. Might not help it either. Who knows? Uh, but it might get it out of there for us here tonight because it's absolutely no good broken off in there. Um, but this rotor is shot. You guys might end up having uh, the similar problem. So, you know, be forewarned on that. Um, if you do plan on, if your ICM is starting to act up and you're starting to have problems with it, you know, be prepared. You might want to invest a new cap and rotor. See, there's the piece there. It's broken off there and it's on the top. So it's just on the top. I might be able to get it out of there, but you're going to definitely probably need a, a new rotor. Um, but anyway, so you got a clip here. You're just going to want to undo that clip and your uh, ICM is out of the vehicle. Okay, so I got a little bit of a bigger problem than what I first anticipated. I got broken weights inside the distributor. There's actually bits of the weights um, just lying in the distributor. Uh, that's where all this rust and corrosion must be coming from because, I mean, we got a weight here uh, just floating around. And, I mean, it's all corroded, or at least it's part of it. I can't even uh, take it out to actually uh, diagnose if, if it actually is a weight in here. Uh, but it is a part of the distributor just walk, rocking around in there. I can't see at this angle. I'm assuming that's what it is. But there is a lot of corrosion in here. So this uh, distributor might be uh, absolutely no good. Um, so it looks like I might have a bigger problem than just an ignition control module here. Um, but I'll show you guys how to install it. And... Um, Maybe once my cap and rotor come in here, maybe I'll be able to get this unit running. I have my doubts. I don't know. It looks like this might be a bigger problem than what I had first anticipated it to be. Alright, so emptying the contents. Just going to take a, a nice amount. We're going to spread it around with our fingertip. Just like as if you were doing your brake pads, alright? So nothing sent nothing. Nothing too fancy about it, you know, just on the backing plate only. You don't have to put it on the connectors or anything of that nature, just on the backing plate only. That's all you need this stuff for. And like I say, they only give you enough of it. So, I mean, there's only not even a teaspoon of this uh, stuff at hand. All right, so next you're going to want to take your ICM after you've cleaned up your distributor uh, where the ICM sits. You're going to just want to take your ignition control module with the shiny part, with the greasy part facing down like so. And you're gonna want to install it where the old one was situated. Next, you're gonna to want to install your pigtail connectors and then run the 
ICM around the distributor shaft, just like so, and then restow your fasteners that hold the ICM to the distributor, just like so. 730 seconds socket required for tightening, and then we're going to connect the last two remaining fa uh, connectors that lead up to our ignition control module. And then we're going to restow our distributor, rotor, and cap assembly and connect our spark plug wires and test the unit. Okay, after you restow your rotor and you have all your connections properly connected, you can go ahead and install your distributor cap. And install all your spark plug wires. And this is what it should look like after you're done. So go ahead and install your air breather and whatever hoses uh, you have disconnected and wire connectors uh, that you've disconnected for this particular job. Start the vehicle. If the vehicle still runs poorly or doesn't run at all, check your connections. If the vehicle runs poorly, check your ignition timing. You should always get into a habit of checking your ignition timing after doing something like this anyway, just to be sure.